uh, this is a feel tube, okay, feel tube, and it's used for measuring the melting points of um, solids. And what you're going to do with your lovely aspirin here, and there are some genuinely really nice ones here, um, there's some really lovely shiny ones that were Howen, Abby and um, Annabelle's, for example. And um, what we're trying to do today is see how pure the aspirin actually is. Now to do that, first thing you're going to do is get a capillary tube. And a capillary tube is very, very fine tubes, you might have used them in biology, but they're actually open at both ends. So as a container, at the minute, they're not that good. So what you're going to do is you're going to seal the end of the capillary tube by getting the Bunsen on the roaring flame and you hold one end of it in the roaring flame and you twirl it around. Now if you don't twirl it around you will get a bendy capillary tube which doesn't matter too much for this procedure but actually if you're using proper melting point apparatus where you slot them in a very fine hole it would matter. So we're going to try and get nice straight ones. So you don't need to put it in there very long, this is already sealed. So it's open at that end, that end is sealed, and it's now ready to be used as a tube. What you're then going to do, and because we're going to, to work out your percentage yields in this, I don't want to use any of your crystals, so I'm just kind of pretending a little bit. So we would get the crystals, so these are name in tight lilies, and then you would get the open end of your capillary tube, tap it into the crystals, get a few crystals into the capillary tube, turn it up the other way, then you go tap, 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 like that, and get your crystals to go down to the bottom. Don't try and put too much in at a time, otherwise they'll all get clogged up at the top and they won't go to the bottom. So a little bit, tap, 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 little bit, tap, 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 tap. You're aiming to get about one centimetre depth of um, crystals in the bottom of this. You need to be able to see them clearly. Right, then you get your field tube. Now, uh, Miss Osborne's done a fantastic job in actually matching up the thermometers and the field tubes. So the mercury bulb, but we are using mercury thermometers today, so we are going to be very, very careful. The mercury bulb is in line with the, where the tube here meets the, the straight part here, so the sort of junction, if you like, and that's where they need to be. Now, what you're going to do is attach your capillary tube to the thermometer so the crystals are next to the mercury bulb, things like that. Now, the problem is with this one, you'll see that the capillary tube is too long. It's actually down the side of the bunk. So what you can do with that is very, very carefully snap it. If you're worried about doing that, bring it to me. I will snap it for you. Don't snap too much off because um, you need to make it so that the, the top of this is going to be above the liquid that you'll see in a moment. With an elastic band, you then attach your sample to the thermometer and try and make it so the elastic band is as high as possible because the liquid that we put in here, when it gets really hot, starts degrading the elastic band and you don't really want sort of part of your experiment, the elastic band breaking and then your sample sinking gently to the bottom of your field tube. So, attached. Now, the field tube you're going to fill with something called dibutyl phthalate. Now, dibutyl phthalate, I'm going to hold that there so you can see the hazard symbols on that. It's not pleasant. Okay? It is toxic, it has got um, environmental danger. I'm going to read the label. It says, may cause harm to the unborn child. Very toxic to aquatic organisms. Possible rich of, uh, risk of impaired fertility. Avoid exposure. Obtain special instructions before use. These are your special instructions I'm giving you. Um, in case of accident or you feel unwell, seek medical advice immediately. Show the label where possible. Avoid release into the environment. Refer to special instructions. So the instructions for this are the lid stays on unless you are using it. You are going to carefully pour it into your field tube. Right, now it's very thick so it's quite easy to pour. And you need to pour it really so that the dibutyl phthalate comes just above that junction there. So we need it so that the crystals and the mercury bulb are going to be covered by the dibutyl phthalate. But you don't want it too high up because actually you want a lot of space between the top of this and where the bung is going to be so that the air can compress um, as the, the liquid gets hot. Otherwise you're going to pop your thermometer out and smash like somebody did last week. So, we put that in there. You need to make sure that you can see the scale 
Obviously, there will be where the bung is, part of the scale that you can't see. That won't be a problem, providing your bung, your bung is on the, the position lower than 100 degrees C. You're then going to put your seal tube carefully in a clamp. You should make sure that you can see the crystals really clearly, right, and you can see the scale on the thermometer. When you're ready, and you've checked the height of the Bunsen, you're going to actually heat it here. Now, by heating it at this point here, you're going to create a convection current that's going to go round this dibutyl phthalate here and heat this um, the thermometer and the crystals nice and evenly. Now, we are assuming that the crystals and the thermometer are at the same temperature. Use quite a gentle flame, and you'll be able to see as this warms up, hopefully, a convection current starting. You can, it's really nice. You can actually see it moving around in a moment. And the temperature, of course, will start rising on the thermometer. Now, what you need to do, which obviously I can't because I haven't got any crystals in there, is you'll need to stare at your crystals and you're watching for the first sign of melting. When you first see them starting to melt, you write down the temperature on the thermometer and you keep watching. When all the crystals have melted and all you've got there is a liquid, you write down the temperature on the thermometer. Now, if they're really pure, then those two temperatures will be very close together. Because if it's pure, right, there should be a single melting point. It isn't very likely that you will get a spot on single melting point. And an examiner wouldn't expect you to have. So there will be a melting point range. Hopefully, within that range is the actual melting point of aspirin, which I'm not going to tell you until we've all got the value. Okay? When you've finished and they've melted, you turn your Bunsen burner off, you leave your apparatus to cool. When it's cooled, the dibutyl phthalate can just go back into the bottle. It does not go down the sink. 